Hey guys, it's wonderful to be back with you. You're probably wondering, where's Mr. Mo sitting? Well, I'm sitting in my office in my home because we thought this would be a safer place due to the virus than always going to church. Anyway, I hope you guys all had a great Easter. I know it wasn't your typical Easter. You were not with your friends at church or you didn't go out to eat. Uh, you had to stay at home. But most importantly, you were with your family. And that's probably the most important thing you do on Easter Sunday. But it was still an opportunity to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, wasn't it? And sometimes when you do it just with your family, it makes it extra special because you're making a great memory together. Speaking of memories, usually on Easter, what? You have a lot of candy, right? And uh, I don't know what your guys' favorite candy is, but I've had a lot of favorites over the years. But my two favorites right now are the Cadbury Cream Eggs and the Marshmallow Peeps. What do you guys think of that, huh? It's pretty good. You ever had a Cadbury cream egg? So one thing I like about the eggs, when you take off the wrapping, now I was going to have one, I was going to show you, but Mrs. Mo ate the whole box of Cadbury cream eggs. I went to get one tonight to show you, they're all gone. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I like to bite the end off and then suck the insides out. It takes a long time to do it, but it's a lot of fun, and that way it lasts longer. And my other favorite candy for Easter is Marshmallow Peeps. You guys ever have those? I'm sure you have. I got some right here. They're really good. But here's the thing. You know like when you leave bread out and it gets stale or you leave uh, maybe um, uh, nacho chips out and they get stale? They're no good, right? But when you leave Peeps out, they get hard and crusty. And it's almost like they're better than when they're soft and sweet. I used to work for this Navy Admiral. He would leave his peeps out for like a month. And I'm not exaggerating. He let them get really hard and then he'd eat them. He loved them that way. And then he'd share them with me. And I grew to like them that way too. Anyway, so when we get back together in class, maybe we'll have some Cadbury cream eggs together. Maybe some marshmallow peeps. Whatever it is, we'll have a good time. So, Pastor Mark, this past Sunday, Easter Sunday, started a new series on the book of John and going over the seven miracles that are in the book of John. So he's going to do a miracle a week. And I thought it'd be nice if I talked about the same miracles that he's talking about, but maybe put a little different twist on it than what Pastor Mark does, so that way it's specifically for you. I'd love it that way, right? The first miracle that Pastor Mark shared was the story of raising Lazarus from the dead, from John chapter 11. Remember that story? Lazarus was dead for four days before Jesus got there. And Lazarus' two sisters, Mary and Martha, were not real happy that Jesus got there so late. But Jesus loved all of them. He loved Lazarus. He, he loved his two sisters. And the Bible tells us in John 11:35 that when Jesus got there, he was overcome with grief and compassion, and he wept. In fact, that's the so shortest verse in the whole Bible, Jesus wept. Now, if you think about it, Jesus brought Lazarus back to life, right? But when Lazarus came out of the tomb, Lazarus was wearing his cloths that he had been wrapped in, the clothes he had been wrapped in, and Jesus said to him, said to everybody there, Go ahead and unwrap Lazarus. But Jesus also rose from the dead, right? That's why we celebrate Easter. But Jesus was resurrected, where Lazarus was resuscitated. So there's a difference. That's what I want to talk to you about for just a minute. So Lazarus was resuscitated. Remember Jesus also healed the uh, widow's son at Nain? We talked about that last week. He was also resuscitated. He also healed Jairus', Jairus daughter in the Bible. Jesus healed three people. She was resuscitated. And what that really means is they were just brought back to life. 
Now, people are resuscitated today, but not like they were in the biblical days because they were like totally dead. Okay, maybe dead for a while. And then they brought back to life. But like my son James is an EMT out in Chambersburg area. And he resuscitates people every week. They die. He does CPR. He brings them back to life. Sometimes he has to put those pallet things on their chest and shock them. You know, but they do different things to bring people back to life. People are in the hospitals. Okay, they have to resuscitate them when they die to try and bring them back to life. So... That's what happens um, with everybody except Jesus. Now, Jesus was resurrected, which is an incredible um, thing to even think about and to try and understand. And you remember with Lazarus, remember he was wearing his clothes, and Jesus said, take them off. But what happened with Jesus when he was resurrected where were his cloths? They stayed in the tomb, didn't they? But Jesus' body was gone, but the cloths were there. So when Lazarus and so many others, when they're brought back to life, when they're resuscitated, eventually their body is going to die again. Whether it's disease or decay or whatever, it's going to die, their body's going to die again. But what about Jesus? He was resurrected. So that means he has like a glorified body. And you know, there's something really special about that. And I think that's pretty amazing. Like I said, I don't understand at all. But remember later on in the story of Jesus' resurrection, uh, there was Mary Magdalene and two disciples that went to the tomb. And when they got to the tomb, uh, Jesus' clothes were laying there, and, um, but his body was gone. And the two disciples left. But Mary Magdalene was staying there by herself, and she was crying. And two angels showed up. And the two angels asked her and said, Why are you crying? And she says, I'm looking for the Lord. I'm looking for Jesus, the Savior. And while she's there talking to these angels, a man approaches her. And she thinks it's the gardener that's taking care of the tomb. And, and basically, it wasn't the gardener. It was Jesus. But she didn't recognize him. You gotta understand ask yourself why. I guess because to a degree his body was different, but we don't quite understand it all. And remember later on, Jesus was on the road to, uh, to Emmaus with the two 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 of the, his disciple two disciples of his. And they're walking along, and it wasn't until later on in the evening when they had dinner and Jesus broke bread that they then realized it was Jesus. Now this is all really amazing. Because Jesus was with them, and they didn't recognize him. And I think the same thing, here's the truth I want you to walk away with today. I think the same thing is true with us. Jesus is with us. He's our risen Lord. Right? He will live forever. He will never die. He is alive, and he loves us. He is with us, but we don't always recognize it. And we really need to be attuned to how Jesus shows himself to each one of us. Because Jesus is loving on us all the time. So how did he love on them? He was physically with them to love on them, to encourage the disciples, to um, share with them, to break bread with them. But how does he love on us? He loves on us through our, through our circumstances. Now, what kind of circumstances? Well, he answers our prayers, doesn't he? We, we talk to God, and, he, and Jesus answers our prayers. He sends people our way to encourage us. Sometimes they make us laugh, or sometimes um, they just help us through hard times. Jesus provides us food and shelter and health. And sometimes we just don't realize it's all coming from him. He provides us loving families, and sometimes we just take them for granted. But they're really a gift from Jesus. So this week, I want you to take the time to look for signs, look in your circumstances. Jesus is loving on you. How Jesus is alive 
in your life. And that he's watching over you, he's protecting you, he's loving on you in all kinds of ways. I mean, for example, I spend, I've spent time over at uh, Nathan Chester's house. And Nathan has a good buddy in his neighborhood named Sam. And I have no doubt in my mind that God has provided Sam to love on Nathan. Because that's what God does. Now, sometimes we don't realize that, but I know, for a, I know for sure that's what God's doing in Nathan Chester's life. And he does the same thing in each one of our lives. He loves on us through people. He loves on us through his word. He loves on us in so many different ways. So be attuned to that, okay? Be sensitive to it. And just realize how much God loves you and how he's showing that love to you this coming week. Have a great week. Mr. Zach and I are missing you guys. Um, have a great week. And um, we'll see you next time. Take care.